Are you being called to really step it up in your service to spirit? And maybe that stepping up requires some more wealth and prosperity for you to really make the impact that you're feeling in your heart you need to make. Well, today's guest, Corinne Grillo, is the author of Angel Wealth Magic and the Angel Experiment, which you may remember she was on the podcast uh, a couple years ago with that book. And she's here to talk about making that big leap of faith and then allowing it to expand you, allowing yourself to be in service, allowing yourself to receive prosperity, really allowing yourself to have your whole team give you everything you need to be in service the way you know in your heart you're meant to be. Join us to find out more. Soul Nectar Show. The Soul Nectar Show. You're invited, delighted to discover who you are. Anything is possible if you believe. So join us on this beautiful journey. Soul Nectar Show. Before we start this episode, I, Carrie Hummingbird, and I, Akeem Sami, want you to know that you are invited. You're invited to, to join, join Soul Nectar, Nectar Tribe. Tribe. If you like what you hear on Soul Nectar Show, you will love being in person with us in Soul Nectar Tribe. We invite you to check it out. First 30 days is free. Right now, go to carryhummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com, forward slash membership, and sign up. We'll, we'll see you at our, our next tribe, tribe gathering. gathering. And now, on to the show. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of connection to that which is greater than us, to the great mystery beyond the veil, to that synchronicity that leads us inexorably towards a deeper understanding of ourselves and others in this beautiful planet we call home, Mother Earth. We're so grateful to be here. At least I am. Hope you are too. And I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. I love these conversations. Been having them week after week after week after week for at least, I don't know, six years or more. Maybe it's seven by now. It could be because... Yeah, I think it might be because uh, I started this uh, even before I met Akeem. And gosh, we're like he heading into year seven. So maybe it's been that long. Can you guys believe that? If you've been listening to me that long, do you still like me? You still like these conversations? <laughs> Please keep showing up. Um, anyway, otherwise, why am I doing this? So I'm so glad that you're here. Um, you know, what's on my heart today is that my wonderful friend, Corinne Grillo, is back with us. Welcome, Corinne. I'm great to be here. Thanks um, for having me, Carrie. So glad you're here. And Corinne is uh, just a really, really wonderful friend and, you know, walked the sacred path with me, the Red Road and Mother Earth. And I'm just coming back from the ceremony of light and celebrating the Virgin of Guadalupe, also known as Tenonzin and also known as Mother Earth, Great Mother, and just praying all night long in ceremony and feeling my heart open and feeling the true prayer, the humble prayer come forth and just being willing to see the parts of me that are real, authentic, true. And then the parts of me that are trying, you know, really trying to do it right and trying to say the right thing and trying to be the right thing and, and trying to look the right way and, and hoping that it's correct. And it was funny because when I went for my prayer, I just surrendered. And my prayer was kind of like my soul talking to me like, hey, I know we just need to go and do the thing that we were told to do. And we just need to go do it and stop asking questions about it and stop doubting that it could be so and just go and trust that in the moment, in the now, following the nudge and the guidance and the, you know, the path that's lit up and the thing in your heart that you know is true and just go and do it and be it. Show, follow that path. And then in the moment, you'll know what to say. Maybe nothing, maybe something, but you'll know in that moment what's right. And just trust that if you're listening, you'll know, you know, and, and so I've been, 
really comforting myself and also sticking a little booty in my butt to get out of my house. And, you know, this is one way of, of being in the world on this podcast, but there's also like just being with people, just venturing, just going to shake hands and witness and see and be in the presence of, and in this disconnected world, I really feel like that's what we need right now. We need each other. We need to stop hiding. At least I need to stop hiding. I need to come and be the person I came here to be and not even make any big deal about it. So what? Doesn't matter. Just be a human with other humans. Show up. So this is kind of the energy that I'm coming into the space with. And then I see my my wonderful friend Corinne and and you know, it's like, oh, look at her. She's totally shifted. It's amazing. So fast. Path of transformation. Not even the same. And if you guys, you guys go back and watch the other interview with Corinne. It was a couple of years ago. We did an interview on the last book that did really well, right? It was a bestseller. It did really great. And yeah. you, I'll just put it in the show notes. You guys go take a look. Like if you want to know if transformation is real, go take a look at that other interview and then watch this one. Really? <laughs> yes, because you can tell interview. That's why I love these recorded interviews. Cause you can go back and watch mm-hmm. and see the transformation unfold. So go wow. back, watch the other one. Now come back to this one. So Corinne, you yes. know, I have your like bio and all that. Let me just like a couple, because it's important to say a few things. Corinne Grillo, we're going to do this traditional part. Is the oh, okay. author of Angel Wealth Magic and the Angel Experiment. She is also a Chicana and Puerto Rican mother, a licensed psychotherapist, visionary leader, inspirational speaker, and proprietor of the Casa Condor Retreat Center in Mount Shasta, California. Corinne offers online trainings in authentic spiritual leadership, nature immersions, intuitive healing arts, in-person trainings, and she's dedicated her life to sharing the life-changing gifts she received while learning to work with the angels. And this is completely true. It's all true. I know her personally. It's true. So take my word for it. (laughs) (laughs) If you haven't already decided I'm crazy, then you'll really appreciate what my word is telling you. So Corinne, how are you today? I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm doing pretty good today. Thanks for, thanks for asking. (laughs) Thanks for that beautiful opener as well. Yeah. I'm just getting in my heart lately. It's just coming in. (laughs) Gotta stay within my heart. And yeah. so, you know, Corinne, I've known you for a long time and I know, you know, for everybody that's listening, we already shared the story of how Corinne got connected with the angels. So if you want that story, you have to go watch the other interview because we're not going to cover old ground. So update yourself, go watch the other interview links in the show notes. We're going to move forward from there. So in this past year, you've had a major transformation. And I would say like every single person on earth in this past year has had some kind of big transformation, either that or completely tried to prevent it. So you embraced yours. Do you want to tell us anything about your, you know, your transformation? I know you, you started a whole retreat center um, Casa Condor near Mount Shasta. I mean, that's a huge, huge change in your life. And I know you bring groups there to do transformation work. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that change and where you really feel that is bringing you? Yeah. Okay. Let me feel into this story here because it's really nothing I've talked about publicly (laughs) quite but, um, I think for your audience, I, I think the important, uh, aspect that spirits bringing in right now is that it started with probably cataclysmic feeling like I'm about to lose my shit. Like I'm going to die. Like I had overextended myself when it came to stress levels and projects and, you know, just talk about like, Oh, just get out there and do the thing. Well, I did the thing. And Um, I've, I've, you know, already like my business is, I've already done a lot of leaps of faith and, you know, I've built an entire thing, but this one was the dream, the next dream. This is a dream that I had had uh, about, hold on, about 25 years ago to have a space where I could bring people to and help them, um, make a deeper connection. Uh, And this was when I was getting a master's d- degree in psychology. I didn't quite know what I would do with the property, but I envisioned acreage and, you know, a place where like a sanctuary to bring people. So, so I got a wild hair in December. 
I saw I, that on social. I was like, I know. Wow. And then I, I bought the damn property. Okay. And, and, uh, I mean, it was amazing because I could buy a property, you know, which is like so cool. Which is why um, you teach angel wealth magics, which we're going to get why, to, yeah. which is a new book, but yeah. Hence the book, right? So I did that and it's four and a half hours away. And I'm telling you the second that I bought that property, it was massively initiation energy. It was, everything was going wrong, which is not generally how things work in my life. I mean, it was notable. <laughs> it was notable. I was getting, okay, for the first time in my life, getting hit on by like contractors. And I don't really put on a, put out a vibe of like, I'm hit onable in general. Like I'm not that, that girl. I mean, you know, I've, I've come to grips with that. So all of a sudden, all of these bizarre kind of weird things are happening. And like the, I hired a personal assistant to help because it's a brand new house. I, I, and there was a retreat coming three months after that. And I thought that was going to be plenty of time <laughs> to furnish the whole thing. Anyways, hell, it was pure. Can I say an F-bomb? Yeah, you can. Because I'll just okay. mark it explicit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're fucking hell. I mean, it was hell. I was, it was like a mental breakdown. I stress was like, you know, coming up my shoulders. And I was so terrorized to have my first group there because I eventually got the things done, but it didn't come easy. And so, oh fuck, like what's going to happen? Like what, you know, what's really going to happen here? Am I going to lose my shit? Is this a bad idea? And it, it was probably a solid three or four months of pure torture. And so I like, and then at the same time, I'm having to sell spots to this retreat. So I'm like, it's wonderful. And then on the inside, I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to fucking die. So, you know, cause that's like what real life, like we're out there, you know, you know, selling our courses or whatever, like putting on a good face, but on the inside dying, you know, but well, it was happens. worse. It was, I know, but it was worse than usual is what I'm saying. Cause it happens to me every time, but not like this. This was like life and death. I mean, when you spend that, I mean, this is a house in California. When you spend that much cash, it shit gets real really fast. Um, so, uh, so I stressed. And so luckily the people that were coming had just graduated from my six month training. So they knew me already. They knew kind of some of the situation. Um, and during that week, I was taken into a zone where I could not eat and I could not sleep. So, and I wasn't nervous. It was just when, when they were there, I was fine, but it was this process of almost like a forced vision quest while I'm surrounded by 25 people who are paying <laughs> and I'm supposed to keep my shit together with no sleep, no food. And, uh, what happened to me was this total, um, just an intense experience of, uh, of surrender is the best I can call it where, um, my, my, the house's name is Casa Condor. And it's because when I connected with the property, it was Condor spirit, California Condor spirit that wanted to come and hold, hold the space there. And, uh, <laughs> and then Condor spirit started just talking straight through me and I wasn't expecting that. And I started moving differently. I mean, it was this whole thing. And then my ancestors came and I could feel the multiplicity inside of me speaking through me. It wasn't like, oh, I'm connecting with my ancestors out here. It's like literally all of a sudden I felt like a cholo. Okay. And my ancestors from East LA rolled up. My ancestors from, from um, Puerto Rico, all the healers, all the oracles came and then it just blew everything I'd done in the past out of the water, period. Like, I mean, it was just so, being so connected, so plugged in. And all the people there were like feeling like all of their own elevation, like all of us just kind of shot off to the next level together. So that experience, I thought after that week was done that, okay, I'm going to come off the mountain, like come back to myself. And that never, that didn't happen. I mean, it's, I'm more myself now than I was, but it took a solid three months for me to recover and integrate the new aspects of my, my awareness, I guess, that came through. It's nothing that I asked for. 
it just kind of happened. I couldn't type for about six weeks. I would have to dictate to my assistant, like, okay, I'm putting some words down, but Condor only likes to type in capital letters and doesn't like put punctuation. It was like relearning how my hands worked through this new or this new essence that was animating through me. So that's kind of my public. And you were re releasing your book or finishing your book at the same time, weren't you? I mean, <laughs> we'll see. How did that work? Was it at the same time? No, luckily. Oh my gosh. Luckily, I think I finished that before the retreat. I think I, you know, that was already locked. I was having, still having to do edits, which was grueling because I, I just was like, who wrote this book? What did I say? And then I had to write, write in some newer things. Um, uh, you know, so, so yeah. So yeah, it was, it was tough. It was really tough. It was notable in my fa my family. They're all laughing at me. Cause I, it was like dealing with a, like a really playful child that, that you really don't want to cross. Cause, cause my <laughs> intent, my intensity level was like up from, from like a 10 up to like a 40. So like, you better watch your boundary with me <laughs> cause, cause Hey children, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. And you know what? And I know there's a lot up in the space, right? So I love that you, um, that you're sharing this because this is part of transformation work. And it doesn't matter if you're leading others or you're simply leading your family or you're just leading yourself. It doesn't matter. It, anytime you up level, like you up leveled, you did the thing, the big thing you up leveled, you're going to have like the, <laughs> the upgrade, right? Like now the whole of you has to upgrade to match that up level. And so you, you get expanded past your boundary, like past your, your, the place, you know, you can ha keep your shit together. You get pushed way past that and you, and then you get to learn how to hold your shit together, like way past your boundaries. Way so far past. <laughs> my, I had nothing left by the middle of that week. I'm like, look, you guys, I don't know what's going to happen today. So you guys, you know, you guys each have responsibility for yourselves and whatever comes through, don't blame me. Yeah, just everybody is up leveling at the same time because yeah, I, I'm, and an, so, I'm the mother of this family. So. I know. So it's like I'm I'm literally breaking in front of these folks, <laughs> laughing my ass off. I've never blasphemed so much in one retreat. All this blasphemy was coming out. I mean, these are angel people, people who came. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? It was so, here's what it was. So purely real, authentic not trying to be anyone for any motherfucker like all of my roles dismantled all at once what a female is got turned on its head because i was aware of the man inside of me so i'm i'm like part literally like part cholo i dress like a cholo mostly <laughs> in life now so so it was just like i just could not give a fuck all of a sudden and was dropping so many jokes we're all laughing um and it was such a beautiful experience but a total total dissolution of the personality for a while um so this other aspect of myself could emerge and and say hello <laughs> and then after that it, you know I had to like figure out what to do about it you know <laughs> yeah well those aspects and actually that does have to do with wealth too I believe is that healing of the masculine. You know, if you're in a feminine body, that healing yeah. and the integration with the masculine energy, which is the provider energy, is yes. like can be on the inside and not be waiting for some guy on the outside to provide, which you and I have also had other conversations about that. So we know like this is a journey, right? So it's like yeah. it's like really embracing the the deep power, you know, the deep wisdom of the integration of those aspects of self. Mm -hmm. which truly, and this is coming through me right now. So I'm saying this for the first time, which truly deeply is the mother <laughs> because yes. the mother births both. Right. Oh, so yeah. like comes down to the mother and then the mother is like the deepest place within us that, and this is for, it doesn't matter what body you're in. It's like that, that deep mother inside. Yeah. I mean, and that, that was another aspect of it. So that kind of channeling I was doing, it was instant it was automatic and you know Guadalupe's slathered all over my property you know I, I consider it like a just a, a portal into into Me the desert of Mexico um but uh but yeah 
mother energy, the nurturing energy that was oozing out of the land after we kind of took the cork off of the land, it it is like mother's milk. And so me becoming integrated with my masculine and also my animal. So like I am part condor, part sholo, part corinth, right? And but and other stuff. <laughs> but but just being aware of my my identities, I guess, which as a psychotherapist, you could look at it as, you know, kind of multiple personality disorders, but it's very, it's very cohesive still. It's not split off. It's just, I'm just aware of all of us and okay, who's leading today? Um, but, but yeah, the mother is so freaking big, right? It's, it was so authentic and beautiful and the teachings that were coming through, it was like a massive coordination of all the animals. Like when I would open new directions, all the animals would come. It was like, uh, we have an ongoing joke instead of being snow white, being snow brown. Cause like whenever she opens her mouth, like all the vultures would come, you know, uh, because the vulture is really aligned with, with, uh, with Condor. Condor spirit. Yeah, yeah. It's the same family and they're, yeah, they're so, actually very family oriented. So, yeah, I mean, I, I have a deep love for, for the carcass eaters. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was beautiful and yeah, the mother who's, who's really emerging in all of us in very unique, uh, ways to, to, in a sense, uh, help us embody and express the facets of her diamond, her beingness. And, you know, my experience of her, I, it has been so inclusive and uh, nurturing and loving in in an even more deep and palpable way. And so, you know, I love Carrie, your, your work, because you, you, you know, you speak a lot about, you know, the power of the mother Pachamama and, and, and I think that a lot of people just still kind of see it as this thing we're going to talk about because it's, you know, that's what we're going to talk about. And that's what shamans talk about, um, right? But, or like, there's a lot of conversation about the divine feminine rising. And it's this really like, yeah, kind of thing. But I feel it's dropped into a deeper level for a lot of us. The access to her is dropping deeper, almost like humanity or humans have an ability to embody the spirit more. Um, and it's not an intellectual process like it is for so many people pretending that their spirituality, their, their connection to spirituality is mostly an intellectual exercise. It's not a fully embodied exercise. And so there is like so much opportunity for us to open up our bodies to, um, to, to become animated through her. Yeah, I love that you just said that. And then I'm going to tie it back to prosperity, which is what your book's about, really, is that wealth yeah. is yeah. like, um, well, let's just say when you allow the mother to fully embody you, because or you just acknowledge, it's not even really acknowledge, it's, it's acknowledging, acknowledging that you are her. Because she, what else is your body made of? What, I, it's not made of Mars. Yeah, It's made of earth. So it's like when we acknowledge I'm made of you, dear yeah. mother, I am made of you. Yeah, And you gave me my body. You gave me this life. You gave me the food to nourish myself. You gave me breath. You yeah. gave me a heart that beats. And you even gave me a way to align it with you so that if I'm out of balance, I can come back home. It's like, wow, how giving and like embracing that aspect of ourselves, you know, and really getting deep into the body rather than trying to avoid it. There's a lot of, like you said, a lot of, even a lot of people that consider themselves to be very spiritual or light workers, they don't want anything to do with the body. They don't want to get in it. Mm -hmm. it's like, get away from me earth. Yeah. And then people trying to like fly to other planets, like hope that their earth body works on some other foreign planet. Good luck. I don't think your good earth luck. body is going to work on any other planet. Like you're yeah, made good luck. earth. 
So, so true. So true. You better I, get your ass content with earth. <laughs> I million percent agree. I a million percent agree. Cause I work a lot in those spiritual communities <laughs> that I meet. And that's like my first, like my first, especially when I'm doing long-term trainings with people, like you better get right with yourself on the planet first. So don't worry about your aliens just yet. Cause it's not, it's just going to make you crazy unless you, you're right with planet earth and with Pachamama, you know? So yeah, I agree. It's, it's, there's so much magic here. There's so much magic in the way the divine animates and, and conspires through the earth and through our bodies is so pure magic. Um, but it takes us a while. Those of us who uh, have deeply sensitive hearts to want to fucking be here. It takes a while. It takes you know. a while because it does, you know, it's pain. There's pain and pleasure, you know, and the yeah. pain part is hard to endure. And so you got to build your pain muscle in order yeah. to endure it and transmute yeah. things into gold. But that's what we're here for. And the more that we can do that and embody, I love you're talking about the embodiment, the more that we can, we can like face those wealth demons, right? And we can open up more access to the true abundance, which isn't, yes. doesn't need us groveling down on our knees. That's, she doesn't want us groveling on our knees to her. She wants us standing up, following guidance and following our hearts and doing good things. That's what she wants us to do to yeah. take care of the planet. Yeah. And I, I, from my experience, she also <laughs> wants us to partake, celebrate, celebrate, to, enjoy to, your to body, laugh. enjoy your life, laugh, enjoy yeah. your pleasure to be, to experience pleasure and to move away from all of this hardcore, like I have a responsibility and I have a duty. I have a duty to, and like away from that shit and into like authentic joy and the authentic joy of, of, of serving, um, and, and just, yeah, not taking it all so seriously. I, you know, I don't know, <laughs> Carrie, if you saw, if you saw my book, like the, the new one, the back cover, you know, I, yes. I, 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 like my publisher refused to put that, that picture. On I know. And I, I want, yeah, I, you guys, it's like on the back cover. It's a beautiful picture. Yeah, they, they refused because they wanted me to, to be the center of attention. But I'm like, when it comes to wealth, I am not the center of attention. It's her. Uh, and it's this, you know, mural of this like beautiful uh, goddess standing behind me. It's like a, you know, a mural painting. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like this kind of stuff, you know, little acts of disruption of of like, look, it's not about me because they they wanted they want you to you know I'm wearing a baseball cap I look like a thug in there a baseball cap and like they want me to be all pretty and I'm like I'm not in the pretty mood today and for this book it's not about being pretty it's about wealth and the secret to wealth is about something bigger than me yes talk about that it's about something bigger than me so when we make our prayers for wealth and we make them for me how effective is that versus expanding our prayer circle to include more than just ourselves. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, it, it's just, you know, if we feel always, we constantly feel like we are the center of attention and this is our fundamental problem. But when we learn to put our center of attention to something that's divine, to something that is beautiful and powerful, and we see life through her eyes, right? Then we can see that we're just brothers and sisters. Some of us are like the crazy uncles that we don't want to go to Thanksgiving dinner with. Like, oh, fuck, fuck that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be around that person. But, 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 you know, for me, the internal wealth comes from, yes, I'm going to ask for a boat boatload of cash. And also I want to do it because I want to make that link to inspire others, to inspire other women to to bring the, to elevate what's possible for all of us. And so when we, we can have our individual need, but when we cross it with, with the collective, when we connect it with the collective, then we um, boost our power. We boost all of our power. Um, and so, so yeah, through, through the wealth magic process, uh, you know, we, we, I talk a lot about angels and, and stuff like that, but fundamentally, um, you know, the great mother gave birth to all of that. And so, you know, a lot of my work is just kind of, because I think the masculine was really like, mm, you know, it's like an erect penis, like, boom, just me. And then <laughs> the feminist, 
the, the, the it's feminism. all about me erect right the circle the, erect the a statue i mean even just that word erect a statue it's like it's like bro you're right about, out yeah standing up yeah. and standing out exactly so here i am here i am right here's my penis and then the feminine is like the, the wrap around she wraps around it right she she contains it if you will um so so my um my philosophy is that you know we've heard of the i am and the i am movement and and so much of the teaching that's been coming through me at least over the summer was that we're moving from i am to we are yes and we so are. we are we are both and we speak so so there's this false false notion that okay i'm a teacher and you're a student and blah 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 but if we realize like everyone's sharing medicine equally so I have as much to gain from my students as they have to gain from me. It's equal. It's a collaboration. Everything's a collaboration. There's no, no hierarchies and none of that. It's we. <laughs> yeah, it's we. And, you know, and, and guru is not a dirty word. It just means teacher, but it's in a context. It's like you're right now, like I'm not an expert on motorcycles, but if somebody was, and I wanted to learn about that, they are the guru of motorcycles and I'm going them to, to them to learn. And then I'm done learning that I, I go off and I'm going to teach spirituality or I'm going to share what I know about this. So it's like, we all have something to teach and share with each other, mm -hmm. and, you know, so it's not a static. I think we're, we're getting mm -hmm. rid of static. Like there's no more static status and yeah. like, you know, like you're on a pedestal above everybody else forever. No, you're not. And you're never, on, it's not a good place to be anyway. Cause you can get knocked off of there. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, yeah. so I think that we, we have, and I love that you said about that, you know, we, we stopped looking at other planets. Like it's nice to know that, I mean, I was really happy to learn, you know, okay, I'm Pleiadian. I'm really glad to know that. Thank you. Thanks for telling me. Now I know who I am or where I came from, but now I'm on earth. Like I'm part earth. Exactly. I bet. So I'm on earth as a Pleiadian. That means I'm part earth, part Pleiadian. So, and whatever other star systems I've been to. So it's like, <sighs> Do we have to keep defining it? That's kind of like the whole no. question of humanity. I believe that we were placed here in human suits so that we could learn to accept each other. Honestly, I, it's coming to that. Like, and then we're so we look different, and then we do the same thing we do to each other when we're star people. We're like, but you're green. I don't like green. But you're purple. I don't like purple. But you have that weird like googly eye thing. I don't like that. You know. Exactly. Now we all look basically the same. And we're still yeah. like making differences. So we yeah. need to stop othering and start weeing. Start weeing. Yeah. Start seeing it. And be, instead of building walls, build bridges with each other. Right. Um, which is really as polarizing as, as, as things have been, all, all the things have been so polarizing. It is either going to turn us into extremists or help us get to work on the inside, learning how to build bridges. Um, and instead of building walls, which we all, uh, you know, are at risk of and probably did, did for a while. And, and so, you know, my, <clears throat> my arc, you know, is, is, uh, yeah, seeing it. Okay. That's my brother speaking. I so strongly disagree. I so strongly disagree with him, but fundamentally he's pretty cute <laughs> in his ridiculousness. Um, as far as brothers go, you know? Doesn't mean yeah. I want to. It doesn't mean I want to hang out with him, but it doesn't mean I want to play his game right now. But I know I see I see the game he's playing. Um, the answer is going to be no, but nice try. And <laughs> you know we're all doing our best. <laughs> exactly, and we can kind of chuckle about it and accept him, even as he's doing his thing. It's kind of yeah. like um, I was listening to Wild Mercy uh, audiobook and uh, Maribai Star is the author of that, and she was talking about um how. Don, you know, she was all like ready for female empowerment. And then Donald Trump got elected. <laughs> and she was like, ever the whole world is going straight to hell. And she was straight gonna directly up, to hell, directly to hell. And she was going to give up her book. And she's like, wait a second. Okay. After I got calm and I got centered again, I said, oh, this is the perfect thing to happen right now for divine feminine to express itself because we're about everyone. We're about all of life. We're about accepting all the aspects, like you said, of that diamond, the fractal of mother earth, the, of the consciousness, accepting everything that's coming through as part of, and 
that it's all evolving, you know, as part of a conversation, the more we choose to evolve in that conversation. And the greater mm -hmm. we cast our net, the more prosperity actually flows to us because we're bringing home more of ourselves. Um, talk about that a little bit. I mean, I, that just came out of my mouth. So I'm hoping that you know okay. how to explain that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which part? What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> so talk about the wealth and like the, like well, wealth blockers, like what is a wealth blocker in this context and how would you increase and expand your prosperity by, um, mm -hmm. through accepting and allowing and embracing other parts of human consciousness that maybe you don't agree with. Yeah. Well, I, I think this, as soon as we realize we're projecting and judging something outside of us, it's an indicator that it's something to look at inside one way or the other. I find the more the more butt hurt we get is in equal um it equally matches how how much power you've given to other people so when you mm. catch yourself being so freaking butt hurt that's the opposite of 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 being being um having the resilience strength and fortitude to take those sacred actions you're being guided to take to be able to make some good shit happen for you because if we stay in this victimized state how can you actually dream bigger if you're concerned about this conspiracy theory over here about, you know, the big brother watching or whatever, you know, there's, there's tons of stuff, tons of stuff on the, on the appetizer platter. So as opposed to dumping our energy into these buckets that really harm us, they, they make us, uh, they shrink our hearts. Um, instead of dumping energy there, if we dump energy into ourselves and say, hmm, what's possible? We align ourselves. We call in like, in, you know, I work with angels. Um, well, I work with a lot of amazing beings, but angels is, you know, this is this the book. Um, you know, using that power instead of projecting it outside and being butthurt out there, go in here. What are you freaking distracting yourself from? You know? Yeah. And <laughs> oh, then you, know, you want it. You want to get up in some drama, a little chaos addiction, perhaps. Okay. What are you distracting yourself from? And so wealth blockers are the big ass demons that live inside of us that, that are kind of distracting us or making us feel smaller than we are, or, you know, those kinds of things. So in the book, you know, we, I talk a, a, about some of those and give some solutions or some exercises to, to help people identify those kind of sneaky little things that they're doing to, to, uh, trick themselves. Yeah, putting your attention outside of yourself instead of on the inside and wanting to stop what's going on out there rather than like looking inside and saying, what's the solution inside me? Like, where, what can I do today that makes a difference? And that's going to make a difference as yeah. opposed to tantruming. Right? Yeah, tantrums, they don't they get attention, but they don't really create good energy. This is kind of like. The Celestine prophecy revealed all that to us. It was like, okay, when you put negative attention on negative attention, you create more negative energy and negative and negative and negative exactly. and it just grows. And then I when mean, you put the energy on the positive, it grows too. So yeah, exactly. It's like, so it's not about spiritual bypassing. Cause I think a lot of people, when they, when they look at political issues or whatever, a lot of spiritual folk are like, oh, I'm beyond that. I'm so I've transcended it. it. I've transcended <laughs> it. These are merely human affairs. And it's like, Okay. Let you me are just, human. <laughs> let me just, okay. I'm pretty sure. Let me just touch that. Yeah. Still here. Okay. Still not, human. Quite asc not quite ascended yet. Let's get real. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe in your imagination, you're a fifth dimensional being, but right now, okay, here's what I'm seeing. <laughs> How's your life down on the ground? You know, see that's and that's what's so funny is that book, uh, book the second wave transcending the human drama. When I was writing, I was channeling that, and they already knew it was a trap. I was like, oh my god, you're trapping people who want to escape this planet and being human. Holy shit, you're doing that! And I was like, <laughs> I just let it happen. I was like, oh, that's what's going on. Yeah. Oh so yeah, god. because we do want to transcend it, but we can't, Corinne. What There's happens no need. when we try There's to transcend the humanity of us? Then what happens to our prosperity? Yeah, well, it's it's it, it it takes the fuel, the energy away from your physical life, so it's disruptive to your relationships, to your love relationships, and to your wealth capacity. Um, if you're again escaping the planet and things like that, it's very it's the opposite of the energy that you need in in order you know to fully embrace your wealth capacity. You have to be freaking down with being here, like enjoy it. For me, I see it as like 
oh, there's this code I'd like to crack, right? It's like a puzzle, putting puzzle pieces together. Um, and, you know, it, it can be so, so fun. Uh, but yeah, you know, the spiritual community is like a little tricky, right? They trick themselves into thinking like they, oh, I have to be an ascendant or be a better person. You don't really have to do anything. Just do some cool shit in the world and it's going to happen. Like do fun stuff. So like make a dream happen and see what happens. You before you know it, you you might morph into a freaking condor cholo. You know, you could surprise yourself. <laughs> yeah, and enjoying your life too. Like, like yeah. um, let's say I've fully experienced, and, and those of you who've been with me for a long time, thank you for staying during this learning process. But I I have fully experienced what happens when I'm in my full judgment about like the humanity part and like judging it shouldn't be this or shouldn't be that or like let's transcend that icky crappy stuff and you know and it's like be a better you know more spiritual i did that at the beginning because everybody does and i was like yeah it's, it's like that a, is not it's a process. fun like it sucks, it sucks being around somebody that's being like that you know yeah. and what's more fun is being around somebody who accepts the humanity of it like yeah, you're a human being. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be angry. Yeah, you're going to be hateful. Yeah. Corinna, like one of the people that I know <laughs> that has for a long time accepted those parts of being human. And that makes you easier to be around when you accept it. Uh, yeah. And it, you know, accepting ourselves, I think is, is one of the keys, like so, so deeply accepting yourself and, and without feeling compelled, like you have to change it or else something's going to have, there's going to be some, you know, I'm just going to be a better person. You know, it, I, I, I'm deeply over that. <laughs> I'm deeply over that. Um, but some, something I want to say about the back to the political thing. So I do tantrum and I see what's happening and like, you know, with the, the, the women's rights and all of that, like, dude, you know, that, that enrages me. The thing is, the difference is, it's like, okay, there's some rage. You let yourself tantrum. And then back inside, what is my role? What can I personally do to impact this issue in a healthy way, you know, in a productive way, rather than in a, in another way? Like some people really are here to, to just freaking raise hell, right? And warrior up and be like, you know, and, and do that. I feel, you know, I'm, I'm down with that too, right? But that's, that's not generally my role. Right. So you have to know your lane and don't compromise because you think the right thing to do is to get out on the streets and do this. I mean, everybody has a different part is participating in different ways, but we have to understand what our lane is. Yeah. Because, um, with the, without the Donald Trump's, um, taking their role on and, and doing their really good job of exemplifying all the shadow patterns that have been in operation for the last thousands of years, we wouldn't have been so stirred up to go, I hate those patterns. Like, I'm yeah. sick of that. I mean, there's lots of men who saw that too. And we're like, this is awful. I never want to be like no. that. The answer is yeah. no, I never want to be that guy. I hate that yeah. stuff, you know? So yeah. like, if we have to see it. Somebody's got to hold the role. You know, somebody has to put it in our face and show us. Well and, played. <laughs> you know, and yeah, good Good job. Bravo. Bravo. Good performance. It was <laughs> Chef's kiss to that. Yeah. yeah. You helped us really decide we don't want to be that. Thank you. Yeah. You know, so, so now what we get to choose and, you know, my role is, is a little bit spunky, you know, a little feisty and some people come in and they think it's going to be one way, but there's a little trickster inside me that kind of, I know you're a little rebel rouser. I love like, it. Like It just goes like this and people go, but you, but, but you, I thought you were for, I, oh, you were just showing me it's like, yes, I was, <laughs> I don't even know I'm doing that. That's the best part. Cause that's yeah. how I'm designed. So I'm mm. kept in the dark a lot. So I just, you know, act just... things. I only understand myself later. <laughs> so, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> otherwise I tell everybody. Okay. So, so, you know, you have to kind of know your lane and get comfortable with it. Right. And, yeah. and then the more comfortable with you are with yourself, just like, just like, let's just like streamline this. The more comfortable you are with yourself and how you're meant to be, how you're designed, the more your prosperity is going to grow because yeah. you're not blocking yourself anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I wrote the book, I, you know, since we're start, you know, since you're going to flag this as explicit, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, so the wealth blockers originally were called wealth cock blockers, but my... <laughs> Your publicist would not let her say that. My publicist would, would let me say cock, but so... Um, She's too respectable for that. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a, I'm a lady. 
<laughs> Milady, we don't say things like that. I'm a lady. Oh, I forgot <laughs> where I was going with that. I probably just wanted to say cock out loud. You might have just wanted to say it, you know, just to say, just to claim that. But I know. <laughs> at any rate, this <laughs> <laughs> let's just say it's not a mystery it, it is a mystery until it's not it's really the more aligned you get with yourself the more the money comes in the more that you're accepting yourself you're really just accepting who you are oh right? yeah I mean that's, that's really what I, the thing yeah. it's about self-acceptance it well it's really about seeing it first because a lot of people have the assumption that what what they're experiencing, what they're what they're filtering through their their inner experience of how they experience life is just that's the way it is, and so first you have to see the dynamic that's stopping you, and then accept it. Like I see you, I accept you, and what am I going to do? What what's my what's my conscious choice that I'm making now about this? So one of the wealth blockers that I talk about that's pretty major, especially for spiritual folk is shame. Um, and people carry a lot of shame about asking for more cash, uh, creating, you know, a lot of folks, maybe they have the programming of not feeling worthy growing up in sinner culture and things like that. Like they're not worthy or of asking more. A lot of people don't like to be visible. They, they assume that they're just shy or introverted when often it's just trauma It's early childhood trauma that makes them kind of shrink back when they they're so at a soul level, they're meant to kind of show up a little bit more with a little more force and fire. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different um, ways that we will unconsciously block ourselves and tell ourselves stories about us as if we know us. And I'm here to say, we don't know who we are. Yeah. And we, you know, we yeah. do get these memories. So I mean, as we wake up, we start to realize, oh, I had this past life where I was burned at the stake for, you know, using my power, things like that, that, yeah. you know, but that's just an old story. That's, I mean, it's not a, it's a life experience you have, but it's not happening right now. You know, so this is kind of like, you have to kind of, um, be present. Like you said, in the presence, we know who we are in the presence. Mm -hmm. We take the next step mm -hmm. in the presence. We don't let these old stories or these ancestral patterns or these cultural expectations stand in the way because in the presence, we're just simply acting from the presence. Yes. From the now. Yes. And yes. that we might be aware of that in the presence and then still move forward. Still move forward in a powerful way you know, and knowing that direction and being willing to, to take a lot of positive risks, um, terrorizing risks. And, uh, you know, in the book, I, 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 because usually like, I'll, so it's an 11 day ritual at the end of the book with, yeah, I saw know, that. Mm -hmm. with angels, but the first part of the book is really, yeah. Like looking at, looking in these territories and also getting commitment, like, okay, you picked up a book called Angel Wealth Magic. Why? What does that mean for you? What's the story around money? Like all of this stuff first. So, so that, you know, when you get to the actual ritual, you, you know, the energy is more likely to stick and you can be more magnetic because like this magic is intensely like powerful. It's good magic. I mean, I've had a lot of people uh, do this process with me over the last couple of years and <laughs> like really wild things happen. Um, but you know, the way that we set it up is really in a way heart centered. I'm, I'm really, when I was writing this book, it was really when spirit was coming through, they wanted to reach really heart centered people so that they could up, you know, they could start taking their wealth ceiling to the next level so that we could fund uh, the, the, the causes that we want and have economic power in it and economic power being as beautiful as spiritual power. Uh, especially at a time like this, when we're, we're seeing our, 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 our bad uncles at play. <laughs> Our yeah, naughty, pretty, they're, our, they're, our they're being uncles. very naughty and they're not helping the yeah. earth. And so we do, you yeah. know, it's kind of like matching that, right? It's like, okay, it's, yes. so we get to choose also where we want to put money. Like we can put money towards um, healthy oceans and, you know, healthy jungles and we can put money towards healthy children. So we exactly. get to choose that. That's us. And exactly. if we have money of our own, then we can, we can do that more. We can, we can put money towards the things that matter. Um, yeah. And if we just, if we, if we kind of like 
shrink away out of judgment of money or things like that. I mean, I don't feel resonate with a lot of <laughs> the money coaches. Um, some of them, I don't really feel resonant because I think it's kind of formulaic and there, so there is like some stuff that's phasing out. I feel that doesn't, that feels icky and not correct. And, mm. and what I'm liking about what you're sharing is that it feels really honest and it feels just like a calling forth, like, Hey, you came here to be a, a player on the earth for the good. So you need to get armed up and that includes money. So get yourself armed up and do your work to accept all this money. So you can be in service. In a yes. way. Take the actions required that you're inspired to take. Um, and yes, I, because we want to tip the balance and, and so, you know, we're used to like thinking about millionaires and billionaires being greedy little bastards and not sharing. And that's because heart centered folks, people step it up because you're more likely to share your wealth <laughs> and we need really wealthy people who are dialed into their heart, um, to help to help bring balance back, you know? Yeah. And the people that are really wealthy and hoarding it, they're hurting. So, you know, they just don't know how to stop hurting because they don't understand. Yeah. Well, they're scared. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're all traumatized. We, we were indoctrinated with the most intense lies and, you know, yeah. Learning how to deconstruct those. And that's a part of it. Like when you see the, the greedies, um, it's just trauma. It's just trauma. You know, it's, yeah. it's just, uh, just generations <laughs> of trauma, generations of trauma. And also a lot of programming around where power comes from, you know, and power and comes from the thing is spiritual yeah. people. We know power doesn't come from money. <laughs> yeah. We know where power comes, what true power is. And then this is just a reciprocity exchange. That's all, but it helps us to do good work in the world. So we need it. Yeah, we need it. And it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's a wonderful ally. It's just a wonderful ally. But, you know, money, just like, you know, other things, it's, it is a magnifier. So a lot of people are, are afraid of money because though they're afraid of a lot of things because whatever, it's going to pervert their work or whatever. But, you know, I feel like money is a magnifier. Like it, if it, 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 it in the distorted hands, it will magnify the distortion of, of, of the personality in, in heart centered, loving hands, it will magnify uh, that as well. So that's what I'm banking on. Yeah. So we want to be magnifying the love. So what a great, what a great spiritual exercise to get some money and see what it magnifies in you. Like, does it magnify more generosity and more love or does it show some of your shadow side? You still need to heal in which case do your work, man. That's what we're here for. So get over yourself. Just do it. <laughs> do it. Just do it. <laughs> get over your bad self. Okay. Get over your bad self. Exactly. So nice. Well, is there anything else you want to share? I know we're, we're in a time crunch here. You got to head out and uh, be a mom. So what, what else is there you want to share before we take off? Oh, I, I think I just want to just, you know, in, invite people to, to, you know, work consciously towards, um, towards, you know, for this talk towards wealth, like what we're talking about and to know that there's so many different, um, avenues towards whatever that dream is. Um, and I'm just feeling into what spirit wants to say. Hold on. They are talking about focus and, uh, it, and so, um, you know, focus your mind. They're pointing you past the shadows into the light that shines behind the shadows. They're saying that this is your guiding post and that spirit, your spirit team can help you move past the, the shadows. It's like clouds. So confusion. So if you're confused as far as your direction to really, it's like, imagine that it's just, um, just kind of a, some fog, but that there's a sun burning be right behind it and shoot your arrow uh, past the clouds towards the sun. And then they're saying, trust each step, but, you know, call in your posse like in big ways, but then be prepared to take that step. Even if you don't know where it's headed. Yeah. 
yeah, I think that's it. Sounds like good advice. And that matches a vision that or a download that I got about when we set our vision for what we want to manifest in the world, it's to realize that we're humanity is operating from a consciousness that's lifting, but it's still pretty, like you said, in the shadows and the fog. So when we're making our prayers, it's kind of letting the heart lead with that prayer. Like, like, I love that you say, what's your why in the book, like knowing why it's important because the heart is going to give more accurate information that's aligned mm. with that sun energy. Yes. And it's going to give you that path that's more higher than you could imagine, which is what you want. You want more than you could imagine because um, right now we're operating with kind of some dismal you know, layers of consciousness. So we want to really reach for like well beyond <laughs> you know, what we thought was possible because there's so much more possible. And if we keep reaching for well beyond what we think is possible, we'll finally kind of get there, you know? <laughs> the right, level. exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes. Don't stick with what it. you know, like keep going beyond. Anyway, bigger the prayers, <laughs> exactly. the bigger the prayers, the bigger the growth. Um, Corinne's story is evidence of that, you guys. Like the bigger the, the, bigger the prayer, the bigger the growth. So if you guys want mm -hmm. big shifting growth like that, well, you got to take a big leap. So Corinne did, you can, I am, I promise I am right now doing it and I am calling you going to let you call me to task. Okay. If it. you love this episode, everybody, please uh, like, subscribe, share, and we're going to give you kisses now. Here come the kisses, Corinne. Want to give kisses? Oh, okay, sure. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you, Corinne. I love you too. That was so fun. Okay, Thanks for well, having me on. Absolutely. We'll talk to you guys next week on Soul Nectar Show. Have a great week. Bye for now. If you found even one gold nugget in this episode of Soul Nectar Show, will you do us a favor? Will you subscribe, like, and share this episode? Maybe even write a comment and let us know what you thought about it. We really, really want to engage with you at a much deeper level. Let's be part of community together. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. To dive in deeper to nourishing conversation, visit soulnectar.show. Soul Nectar Show. Awaken away the Soul Nectar Show. Take a sip from the drip of nectar. I'm so sorry,